to welcome you to the upper house of the assembly. You and your team of experts. I also want to congratulate you for the wonderful work you have been doing, working on our forest so as to make it sustainable. It has come to us that you are defending the forest, defending the laws in the forest, even at the cost of your soldiers, I mean the forest guards, who sometimes lose their lives. We are aware of that. Mr. Minister, I come from an area where when we see some little trees, we think that that's a forest. However, we have what we call community forest in some parts of the Northwest. This community forest, we are having a lot of trouble to sustain them. The pressure from the population, the pressure to have food makes in such a way that they are trying to reclaim the forest in order to grow some food. I am just wondering what your ministry is doing so as to educate or help the population around the forest so that they can have something to do sustainably in the forest without completely destroying the forest. What are we doing about our community forest? What are the plans, Mr. Minister? Mr. Minister, we know that our planet Earth is living and is sustained by the forest. Even worldwide, the Congo Basin, which includes Cameroon, they know the importance. The developed countries have gone ahead of us and used the forest to develop their own countries. Now, when they are seeing that it's depleting, they are now asking the developing countries not to cut their own forest, to keep it for them, because that is the survival of the planet Earth. Mr. Minister, in all of the conferences that have been going on, what are these developing countries giving in order to sustain the developing countries in Africa? In all of those conferences, they are the ones who pollute more. The African countries, in fact, pollute just very little. But the forest is ours. What are they doing to support the African countries with their forest? My third preoccupation may be just a suggestion to you, Mr. Minister. I was lucky to visit a zoo in Kenya, in the heart of the capital. The number of people I saw, I was very keen, and even at the gates, I, I, I can't remember how many gates in order that people were paying in order to go into the zoo. I could imagine how much they were getting out of just that one zoo in Nairobi, Kenya. Then, 
Here in Cameroon, here in Yaoundé, I know of only one zoo, and that's the zoo at the Beti, Beti. Mr. Minister, my suggestion is if we can have more than just, just that zoo in Vogbeti. This is holiday time. Just take time and go there and see the number of children people are coming in and out. If we can create another zoo, that will be an added source of revenue and a source of employment. And then if it is well organized, Mr. Minister, we will avoid certain coincidences of children having their arms chopped up by animals. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister, for the reply you are going to give me. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the floor.